And so that's why we said that in the Bible, when the Lord looks at the church, looks at the world, he sees only two types. My people and the others. And then, I used a very, very important reference scripture. In the book of Daniel chapter 12. Those who are not here. And I said, in Daniel chapter 12, the Lord is talking about a humongous distress. The things that you see beginning to start. Hmm? Earthquakes. Floods. Tsunamis. Murders. Economic crisis. Wars. Iraq what? Afghanistan what? Iran what? You see that? Hmm? Right now, we're just in the beginning of it, right? Daniel saw this time then. So he said, at that time, those who are not here, <coughs> excuse me, at that time, which means this time, hmm? What did Daniel see? If you read Daniel 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 1, that is the main scripture that you're going to focus on, right? Today I'm going to move on because I'm handling another thing. To verse 2 and the rest, you know? Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Daniel 12, verse 1, you see a distress that is beginning to unveil. You see that? And when the distress is unveiling... What do you see? He says, it will be terrible. It will be bad. It will be bad. People will suffer. They might die. You see that? They will run. They will cry. They will mourn. Whatever he says. Hmm? He says, but at that time, <laughs> which means, however, in all that, my people, your people, his people, anyone whose name is found written on the book will be delivered. You see that now? So that was the first instrument we used to introduce this message. Hallelujah. The first instrument we use to introduce this message. Because we found out that actually, no matter what, when it comes to his people, he will save them. And we said, hey, we admire those people so much, we want to be like them. Who are they? Who are these people? He calls my people. We said, he loves them, defends them, protects them, annoys them, adores them, he owns them. Hmm? Those who are not, I need to finish this summary because we, we have a message today. Actually, very long, oh, I hope I can cover two things today. I Really, we are going to move, right? But listen to this. He says, however, you are people, everyone whose name will be found written in the book, will be delivered. Which means there are people who are called his people. You see that? And we said, we don't want to be a stupid church just to sit, right? I sit here, and then that, oh, Allah! So for all this time, we have not been his people. You see that? We don't want to be surprised. We want to interrogate this issue. Because the Bible is right here. Huh? The Bible talks about them. We want to find out what are the features of these people. The word is features. 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 What are the features of these people he calls my people? What is the identity of these people that he loves so much to call my people? Those are two words. Features. Identity. Huh? I know you people have been here, but it's okay to write also. Because I'm just trying to finish with them. Eh? What are the characteristics of these people? You know, every population has a characteristic. Their eating behavior, their dwelling locations. What, you know, you, there are many things. You can tell the church all these examples. 
You can tell the church, for example, if you are in Kenya, you must have a kitambulisho after the age of 18 years, right? And that kitambulisho, it spells out your name, which place you got it from, meaning that's where you live, you born there and all that. You see that? So that's the kitambulisho. That's the identity of the Kenyan people. There's an identity card. Hmm? If you go to Rwanda, Rwandese have their own identity card. And if you look at the Kenyans, that population has its features. Huh? Their politicians like to fight. They <laughs> Whatever you want to say, though. <laughs> they campaign for five years. You want to, whatever you want to say. They eat ugali, right? Yes. If you are talking about a West African community, you might say they are eating fufu. You see that? So every population, give this example to the church. Do you understand the example you are giving the church? This is what I am saying. It is you talking. It is you talking, Benta. It is you talking, Alice. It is you talking, uh, Pastor Lillian. And you are telling them, Ata ukienda kwa inchi jirani ya Uganda utapata kwamba kwenye hilo inchi wana kitambulisho chawa wana, wana mambo wakada wakada ambao inawatambulisha kama waganda eh? vilivyo ndio, he, that is how it is in the kingdom of God hmm? and that's why today precious people and I said and I said you know that time you are walking you are walking the aisle don't be a preacher whose legs are, the, the roots have grown. Eh? You know that. Eh? You put your feet down until the roots have grown and people say, Tutamchimba hapo lini. Don't be that preacher because then people will sleep in the church. But I'm saying, the movement that the preacher has here has a lot to do with actually captivating the people. Michael, can you sit down if you don't mind? Just rest here. Once you've set it on me, just rest now. I want you to rest also. Because we have a long journey ahead of us here. So the thing is, every single people have a kitambulisho. They have an identity. They have a feature. Some features. They have characteristics. And for us also, as a church, you are telling them, we want to find out and you do this to them. In the Bible, they're in the Bible. <laughs> You're doing this to them. You understand? <laughs> you understand what I did? You're, stand, you're now with them. Eh? We want to find out that in that Bible, what are the features? You know, you're pointing there. You know, those are very dramatic sermons, you know? Yes. Because you're the right people to preach it. Yes. Hmm? He has loved you, he has blessed you, he has protected you people. You see that? You see what I'm saying? He has taken care of your families. He is keeping you alive, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Very, mm. very, very well, right? You see that? And so, you tell them, you tell them. You I want to finish with these people. You tell them. Today, we want to begin an adventure. We are beginning a journey. An excursion. Expedition. Did you hear the four words? <laughs> adventure a journey expedition excursion hmm? hey we want to begin a journey into the unknown to discover who are these people who really are these people who are these people that can touch the heart of God so much he owns them? He say, my people. And you tell them that so much that at some place in the Bible, he says, they will be my people and I myself, the Lord himself will be their God. Yes. Ah! Mm -mm. Did somebody read there in this preaching? Mm. And that's a very powerful place because he says, I will not send. I'm not sending a messenger. I myself will now be their God. Oh, I was very stunned by that. Eh? that that's the part that touched me. Mm. 
I myself will be their God. Which means I myself will be responsible over them. I will not send an angel, I will not send anyone. And so that's the reason we want to find out who are these people. Do you know now that's how you talk, you people? Is somebody with me? Yes. Did you talk like that? Yes. This past weekend, right? Yes. Yeah, how was it? Yes. They, they said you have changed. Eh? Yes. But they realize that their pastors have changed. <laughs> and one powerful thing is that this message is across the country. You go to this church, you, you, listen, listen, Niangali, before you talk, just stand. You go to this church, listen. You find bishops say, my people, and the Lord calls them my people, and he's crazy about them, everything, anything that touches them, my people, my people, he wants to protect them, you know, he said, and then you listen to Nairobi, and my people, he's a church, and then you read Mombasa, my people, <laughs> all nation, Bosia, Nyeri, Nyaururu Kitale, every, you turn like this, you turn like this, you know, you can imagine how the whole nation is eh? preparing God's people. <laughs> and as you set out with them, you said, we are going on an adventure, excursion, expedition, a journey to look for some unknown, to look for the feature, the characteristics, the identity, three things, of the people that the Lord calls my people. And then we shall cross-reference. Hmm? We shall cross-reference with those characteristics and see, do we really measure up to the standard of the Lord? Do we bear those features? And you tell them, precious people, we could do this church, and it's so sweet, we could do it forever here, and then be shocked one day to find that we were not my people. And the scripture, and you tell them, I'm talking about the CIA, the, the, the Kangare, the Mombasa, and I'm saying, and the scripture that compels us, you, as a pastor, look, you're crazy that time, eh? I want you to be totally crazy about this thing. And the scripture that compels me, that compels me to begin to explore the identity of my people, and I'm doing it inside the church. I am doing it in the house. The church of Christ. I am now in total getting the church. <laughs> hmm? And I want to find out, is this church really God's people? They are now shocked, of course. Eh? And you tell them that the reason I am compelled to investigate us <laughs> To find out if we are really my people is because of the following. There is a scripture that says that, Lord, I used to lead people to you. Lord, I used to lay hands on people in your name. Lord, I healed people in your name. Lord, I did crusades. Lord, I delivered people in your name. And that scripture ends by saying, and the Lord will say, to tell you the truth, I don't know you. I do not know you. Tell them, that is the scripture that is pushing me to investigate this church. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Allow me enjoy this, please. Oh, yes. Yes. Many times I weep. Allow me laugh also. <laughs> Two days ago I was weeping. He took me to Israel and made me weep when I was looking at the garbage dump in Israel. What? There's a flood coming also. What? And so forth. Huh? That's a prophecy I need to give on radio, right? That is why. I have set out to begin a review of this church. <laughs> to start examining us versus, vis-a-vis, -vis, compared to the people he calls my people. 
and you tell them, and if I will find out, <laughs> you tell them, if at the end of this investigation, <laughs> I will find out that we are not my people, from that moment on, we will turn like this as a church and will head towards my people. Yes. Yes. Did you understand that part? Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's what you bring to them, you know. And that scripture, you know, is in Matthew, right? Yes. You see, to tell you, it's also what? Ma you see that? Matthew 7 13. You see that? Yes. Hmm? Lord, I used to do this. Lord, I used to do that. He said, Hey, you did that. Lord, I was in the church. I was worshipping. Worship. Worship all the time. I love worship. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. And he says, I don't want to point at a particular human being. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I do not know you. He said, and you tell them, that is why I am here today. Precious people. I am here. That at the end. We may not be ashamed. Hmm? Are we really his people? Huh? Are we really God's people? You, you, you see, did you hear the emphasis there? Yes. Twice. Twice, three times, you know. Yeah. In our salvation, are we God's people? So you see, so Daniel chapter 12. And then, as you read Daniel chapter 12, you know the first part he says that Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. You remember that part? Yes. Now that part, you turn to them and tell them, Michael, Michael the great prince who protects your people, right? Meaning, don't worry, there will be a divine protection. Ah, excuse me. Excuse me. When there is distress, he's promising his people not to worry. Isn't that a very powerful thing? Yes. And, 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 and then you ask them, who of you here would love a divine protection from the Lord when distress comes? And you see all double hands up. Doubles. Hmm? Double, not one. Hmm? And then you move on. You see, Daniel chapter 12, the first part there of verse 1, says, Michael the great prince, promising divine protection, will protect your people, his people, my people. Right? But when you tell them we are setting out on a journey, expedition, excursion, and on it was what? Adventure. Adventure. Hmm? To discover the characteristic of my people. Then when you read further on, you find a place where he says, distress is coming, people will cry, people will mourn, they will weep, they will die, they will what? Eh? Like never before, right? Then he reaches a place where he says, but at that time, you are people. <laughs> yeah. And he says, everyone whose name is found what? Return in the book. And you tell them, now I know. You walk out now, crazier now, even more crazier. Hmm? Now I know. Hmm? I have just found out, pointing at the Bible from it, with them now. Eh? <laughs> they know where you found out. Eh? Hmm? Hmm? I have actually just found out that Kumbe, there is a book. There is a book, somebody. Yes. I am shocked. Kuma mweka kitabu kingine hapa, nani umu anasema, and that's my people. Why up here? Ah! Yes. Ah! There is a book that anyone whose name shall be found written in the book will be delivered. Then tell them, precious people, and you know, you need to, I told this earlier. See, I, I told this earlier. Kawangwari. I told this. I said, you have to interact with the church. 
Mm. You have to come to the church and tell them, don't be afraid sitting far as if watakukula. You didn't hear me. Now, go back No, I'm just trying to make it light, right? Yes. But what I'm saying, come to the church and tell the precious people, ah, you must stop now. You must stop. <laughs> you understand? Eh? Yes. You're telling them, you must stop now. You must stop there like what has happened. You must now stop. And then tell them, listen to me properly. Stop writing. Just listen now. Stop everything. Just listen. Kumbe, there is now a book. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and inside the book, <laughs> there are names. <laughs> you see that? So we need to find out then. For me then, I want to know, who keeps that book? <laughs> you understand? Yes. yes. Hmm? In other words, whose book is it? Yes. And if we have known the owner, where is it? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> And once we found where it is, we want to find out, are our names in that book? That's why you hear people giving testimony here, Pastor Gazara, and they're going to repeat this. This is a very sweet thing. You can always repeat every introduction, right? Yes. Every introduction, you can repeat this before you move on, right? Yes. Very sweet message. Yes. And this message is right on, right on. I know there's a big of revelation today also, but we need to handle this, you know. So, you see, it's just the right message for now to prepare a people unto the Lord. Yes. You understand? Yes. That's the whole story going on here. Yes. To prepare a people unto the Jehovah, Lord. the Lord. Yes. You see that? There's no better message. Yes. You're preparing the church. Yes. Someone can also, oh, you see, now me, I just want to prepare the church. Say, so, no, but this is the message, preparing the church. The church. Yes. 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 I know the other messages are also very powerful, the garment and so forth. Eh? Yes. And I'm not talking about you right now. I'm just talking to the people. <laughs> <laughs> but listen to this. And then you tell them, now for me, you people, for me, uh, you people, you people, for me, this is now too serious. This is very serious. I must find out. Whose book is it? Where is it? And is my name there? Because once I find it, I want to go through, for example, if the name is a, is a, a Benta. Benta who? Nyongeza. Nyonge, oh, Nyongeza, you, you know the name, okay. I find the bees, eh? I say, Benti, Benlet, Ben what? Eh, eh, down the Lord. <laughs> you, you tell the church these things. Lay my hand on this book. I don't know about you. But for me, if I will let, I will first go to where it's written, Nyongesas, where the Nyongesas are listed. <laughs> hmm? and so, now let us get out. Let us get out, you tell them. Let us get out of here. Get out and begin to understand, to find out which book is this. And tell the precious people, turn with me now. Turn with me, okay? To find your pamoja. Turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. And you tell them, are you there? And, and I didn't say things that I did last time. The first group really enjoyed it. Eh? Because last time I said when you call Revelation 21 or whichever scripture, you are like this, look. Because you want all of them to read the scripture. They like to follow. You see that? Hmm? And I said, you are like this. Look, those of you who are not here, they're four. And you are like this. I said, are you there? I said 21, Revelation 21. You're repeating. You know, because many are asking. And I say, Magani, you see that? Hmm? And they say, are you there? If you are there, say amen. They say, amen. You see that? And then you know they're with you. Because you want them to get this, right? And then as you open the Revelation 21, verse 3, you say, and then you do this. You open it and then look, look, you walk away. You tell them, before we go there, just listen to this first. You see that, eh? Now again, they were here, so they are now there. See you? Again, that's attention, that's an active church. Interactive, you see that? Eh? See you what one alala manini, eh? 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 And the response was as expected. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you see the response from Pastor Janet? Oh, yes. That, that's, that's what I meant by response. Yes. <laughs> Umekula Biblia, umejana neno. Yes. That's powerful. I've never heard anything like that. Eh? Hmm? <laughs> Which means what she did was big. Very powerful, right? Very big. And then you say, focus on me now, precious people. When I go to the scripture where that book is, inside there, you understand? You say, inside what? You're doing for them. Inside there, you're doing like this, eh? When I got that scripture, where the, the book is inside there, but before, before I go, you say, headline, title. And what's the title saying? New Jerusalem. I said, Allah, I know at least that I was taught one thing. I was taught at one plus one equals to two. You tell the church. I may not know much, but that I know. <laughs> I was taught very well that if I add one plus one equal to two. Hmm? One is inside there is the book. And another one says, but the title is New Jerusalem. I said, oh, now I know. <laughs> you understand? Hmm? Now I know what the book is all about. And now I can already add up Tamsi and know who are in the book, who these people are. Yes. Hmm? They are the citizens of the New Jerusalem. Somebody, watch it once a kutafuta kitambulisho hiyo. Twanze to loud when the kabisa to andikisha majina to apply for kitambulisho. You tell them. To my ukundua kwamba, there is a citizenry. You have to belong. The question is, do you belong to the New Jerusalem? You are telling them, eh? Hmm? And, you, and you tell them. You say, someone tell me, Jameni Muniambia ikitu. Yeah. We ni mwenyeji wa hili muji. Na hili muji tunaijua vyema kabisa. Ni muji takatifu. Ni muji la uhaki. Ni muji la mungu. Hakuna jua. Kuna utukufu. You are telling them. He said, that city I know before I read it. I know it. You understand? Yes. <laughs> so I can already line up. He says, because in the book of Second Peter, which we are going to open today. Second Peter chapter 3. Peter chapter 3. We are not supposed to read scripture on this because I'm supposed to summarize it. Eh? 2nd Peter chapter, chapter 3 verse 10 I think, right? Let me see if it is the one. I think it is. And he says, hmm? excuse me. He says, but that day of the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Hmm? Somebody who is come on easy. Ha? Ni kuingia kuvunja na kuondoka. Eh? Eh? Kuingia kuharibu na kuondoka. Eh? <laughs> In which the heavens will pass away with the roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. And the earth and its works... Um, uh, oh, I thought I was reading Amplified. Excuse me about that. Eh? <laughs> okay. That's actually, that's New American Standard. There's NIV, but let me read Amplified. It says, hmm? But that day, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will vanish, pass away, with a thunderous crash. You see that? Thunderous crash. You have to tell the sheep things like that. Yes. <laughs> so they can envision, envision, and begin to develop an understanding, a deeper understanding of what it's all about. It a crash with a thunderous crash. Eh? And the material elements of the universe will be dissolved with fire. Eh? And the earth and the works that are upon it will be burned up. 
And he says, since all these things are thus in the process of being dissolved, <laughs> I like Amplified, eh? Eh? what kind of people ought each of us ought we to be? Uh, in your NIV says, ought we to be, isn't you? This one says, hmm? it says, then, uh, 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 what kind of person ought each of you to be? Oh, yes. In the meanwhile, uh, yeah, 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 amplified. In the meanwhile, as we wait for it, eh? hmm? in consecrated and holy behavior and devout and godly qualities. Ah! <laughs> this is powerful. You don't understand this, you know. You people don't understand what I understand here. <laughs> ah, this is super powerful. Eh? Hmm? Eh, did you hear that? Yes. If I were you, those are the points I've written. About my people already right away there. Yes. Huh? Those are the points. Because he's saying. He's saying. I'm reading Amplified. He says. Then because of that. We should be. Meanwhile we should be. A consecrated people. Say, oh. He says. Sasa na kubali. Sasa ni me kubali kweli. Leo ni me inuwa mikono. Ni me You know. Ni me pata ya kwamba. Ni watu ambao wa me takazwa. Consecrated people. Does somebody see? I think I'm the only one seeing this thing. Eh? Hmm? No, no. I, I'm saying that's you. You're supposed to be telling them that. Eh? But it's good also for you to tell me that. <laughs> hmm? it's, uh, I think I'm the only one seeing this. It's, uh, you people don't seem to understand the thing, the big thing I've discovered yet, the big thing I've seen. Eh? They say, Pastor, tell us what have you seen? I said, I have seen. That Kumbe just title. Kumbe can already get the features just by title. Because he's saying that after the destruction of this comes the new dwelling of what? The consecrated people. I know Jerusalem is the new Jerusalem. It's not the one we have here. You, you, you're telling them, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Wengi wenu saa zingine mnaenda huku. Hii hapa hii. Na mnasema sasa nimefika. Sasa nasikia amani. You tell them that. Eh? Tell them that. But I want to announce to you. I have news for you. You have not yet reached. Yes. <laughs> no just tell them these things, you know. It will open their eyes, right? Hmm? Consecrated people. I am very shocked. And said number 2. Holy behavior. <laughs> Tabia takatifu. Can you imagine? I've not even heard teachers say that to students. Hmm? He said, Tabia nzuri. Uh-uh. Siji nzuri, ratili yako ya nzuri hiyo. You are now telling the church. Ratili yako hiyo, siji ni ratili gani? Siji ni ya nani? Ati tabia nzuri. Ukiweka hapa, sasa mepimika hiyo tabia ni nzuri. Na anasema hapa wazi wazi Asemi tabia nzuri Anasema tabia takatifu Anaitambua kabisa kwa jina Analiita na jina lake yes. You tell them that He calls it by name He said holy behavior Because for without holiness Nobody I said nobody somebody hear me Nobody will see my lord You tell them my lord hmm. They say, hey, we are not, not mungu sasa. Yes. I'm a split huko. He's with the Lord. You understand? <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, I need to finish this, really, because we need to go to today's message, you people. Yes. Don't we? Yes. But for the sake of those who, So, you, is that okay? You can now move on with this kind of stuff I start today, so I go a little bit, one mile. One extra. There's another, there's another <coughs> okay, okay. Because it's a consecrated people, holy behavior. You know, holy behavior is very important. You come to them now and say, Listen to me, people. Listen. Now you tell them, Listen to me. And then you do this. Listen to me. Holy behavior covers a lot of things. You tell them. It's not one particular thing. Vile unaongea na simu. Vile unaangalia, vile unatembea, vile unakula, vile unalala, rafiki wako, everything is covered in behavior. You tell them that. Akisema hivi, amefunike nyingi sana. Vile tunatembea, vile tuakula, 
marafiki zetu hadithi zetu simu zetu tunapiga vipi kazi ni mwetu tuko everything holy behavior he said god did not want to take a chance otherwise you'll catch him say but lord you said holy walking only he said that. <laughs> hmm? no he covered it all he said holy behavior a consecrated people hiyo manake anasema hao watu ambao wameoshwa na damu takatifu la Yesu hao watu wametakazo na je kanisa je nataka niwaulize swali moja leo je katika wokovu wenu hmm? katika mtembeo wako na Yesu je umetakazwa na damu kwa maana wale ambao watakazwa na damu wanajulikana yeah. wanatambuliwa yeah. unamwona ndio huyu ametakazwa yeah. hata eh? Mungu mwenyewe anasema akaona za my people akaona za watu wangu yeah. hey, now you raise questions into their living right yes are you really if you are lasting at women are you really washed by the blood you see that now if you are lasting at men are you really washed by the blood eh? if you are in lies are you really takazwa consecrated because what, and, and then, uh, if i were you you people you're blessed you have church to preach <laughs> me i don't have <laughs> hmm? huh? but the thing is this if i were you i come and tell them this listen the meaning of consecrated that the high priest when he used to enter the holy of holies he did the following consecration meant if you read the book of exodus 28 verse 2 he says make for him a sacred garment to give him dignity and honor you say, you tell them you come forward say muna je do you know the meaning of consecrated you say the way i look at you people you don't know none of you knows no you cannot you cannot know and be seated there you know <laughs> in other words you'll be up on your feet right yes. because for me when you tell me about consecrated i just remember the cross you, you understand you tell them things like that you know you open their mind on scripture and if you remember the priest why do i remember the cross because if you remember the high priest every yom kippur once a year when he was supposed to go and enter the most holy place he came and he was what he was dressed on the garment huh now you're opening up the mind of the church and when he was dressed on the garment what did you find on the garment hmm? what did you find on the garment Exodus 28 told us was he was at the run in the public place he told us haikufichika ilisemwa mbele za umati that when they wear a garment they become right to appear huh? and revelation 19 verse 7 tells us what verse 8 that the garment is the righteousness of men of the church of the lord in the hearts of men you know you now oh, the church is now catching broad now eh? hmm? but when the priest went look everybody he never went without a garment which means without righteousness you are not allowed and when you entered never without blood That's why for me when I hear consecrated I go crazy. I I feel like nataka niseme hii kitu kabisa kabisa mpaka hata wale kwenye shoko soko wasikie. Kumbe ni kuhusu damu. Akisema the people wala maana ita ni watu wake. The people he calls my people. Kumbe it's about the blood that they are fully covered. Those people are covered. You know what it means in Kenya when somebody says you are covered don't worry you're covered. Eh? You tell them things like that. Eh? Hmm? Do you know what it means in Kenya when somebody tells you look don't worry you are covered. Hmm? 
Which means, when that was accident, you have insurance. If you are going through bad places and you are a senior person, you say, we, we've got you covered. He say, end that two in peace now. Don't worry. Meaning, all the dangers have been removed. You have been released. Set free now. You can live your life. Do what you want now for the Lord. And now I hear that consecrated is here. And he says, when I see consecrated, I see my people. And he says, the blood. And look, look, somebody. And you see when he entered, but inside, Kofia, inside like this. It was written, consecrated, meaning holy unto the Lord. Manake, how and what one bow have been set apart. Hallelujah. Amen. You tell them. Hmm? They have been set apart. Which means the Lord is saying, he has sep these ones I have separated out. Sasa hao ni wachia hao sasa. Hao sasa ni me separate. And you can you give them these examples I'm giving? Yes. yes. Give them this example. For example, in Kenya, many times you go to a school, or you are a head teacher, and you go now, you bring a child before the headmaster. And you tell the headmaster, Sir, this child, I have a few issues I need to discuss with you about this child. Hmm? And when the headmaster looks at your face, you are not happy. You know, those few issues must be bad issues. Yes. Eh? And yet, Kumbe, this child is covered by the headmaster. Yes. You say, ah, for, for gems. Don't worry about gems. There is something I'm doing with him. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. <laughs> hmm? Haven't you heard that said in Kenya? Don't worry about him. In fact, I've talked to the parents. We are planning tuitions. Huh? You understand now? They got him covered. <laughs> you understand? Huh? That's what the Lord is saying. These ones now have separated. Don't worry about them. There is something new I am doing with them. Yes. Now, don't bother with them now. <laughs> you understand me? Yes. Many times you, you say you want to ken that student. Eh? Yes. <laughs> you lie down to go ken. He said, oh, if it is James, don't worry. There is something I'm doing with him. I will let you know. You understand? Eh? Yes. In fact, I've, yesterday I was talking to the father. Huh? You see that? You see, so, so there is something going on. This person is covered. Hakuna mm. viboko. Yeah. There is going to be tuition, tutorials, what, what. Yes. Atapita tu kusinda wengine tena. Yeah. Eh? Ati kumchapa viboko. Give these examples to the church. Yes. Eh? I don't want to knock this because, you know, when I'm fired up. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah? And tell them. Consecrated people means a people covered with blood. That's why the high priest, when he entered the most holy place with blood, to cover the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. plus himself, plus his family. Hmm? Precious people. No, 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 no. Please, can I add you? So those who thought they had got in today is a new one. And you tell them, consecrated people it means the following again i've said separated people but most important since i have mentioned the blood what else does it mean so all these are the features of my people he says if i've mentioned the blood that means they are a covenant people people under covenant yes. Which means they have been bound by a covenant. Their conduct is directed, is instructed by the covenant. <laughs> Nobody heard me there. Hmm? No, you are telling them. <laughs> Do you know at times when your movement is instructed by some set of rules? 
they say, um, in this home, you're giving them that example, in this home, by exactly 6.30 p.m., everybody is seated at the dinner table. Everybody's home. No, no, first of all, they, they, I don't think that's how they started. They start by saying, in this home, I am the father. <laughs> you have to understand the line of authority first. Because they might ask you, says, that says who? You, you understand at the end of it, when you give the set of rules, say, that says your mom. You understand? <laughs> no, in this home, number one, I am the father. In this home, the Lord is king. You understand? Mm -hmm. In this home, we shall all serve the Lord. Did, you are now setting rules. You are giving them the example. In this home, the father is the head of the family. Before you give the rules, of course. Eh? <laughs> you understand? They have to know where the authority is coming from. Mm -hmm. And if it's the mother, you know, the, the, you know, today we have seen mothers and so forth. Eh? You say, in this home, I am the one setting the rules. I am the head of the home. And they're so, in fact, they have done so well. The ladies who are head of family, right? In fact, they have brought their families to Christ. In so, mo, all, most of them, instead of the other. Actually, it's not opposite, really. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy? Yes. That's why in, in, in psychological counseling, they even say, it's better to have a single mom now than to have both parents, where daddy, and Aruri Satisa, and later Mwanamuke, Nini, Wanaribu Mtoto. Cindy? After that, they are uko, and they are going to be able to live in So you can grow up straight. You see that? As you want to Do you understand the whole thing? That's why it is today. But what I'm saying is this. In this home, I am the leader. And in this home, the Bible is the book. <laughs> you understand? And then you say, now, having said that, in this home, if you know that you belong under this roof, and you know that time you're talking to your kids, eh? <laughs> they know whom you're talking to. <laughs> 7 p.m., everybody must be home. Yes, eh? Unless you have traveled, that's different. I will have arranged it, you know. Yes, I will have gotten involved in that one. <laughs> you understand? In this home, every Sunday, seven sharp, everybody ama kanyaga inja na ingia kwa gari ama naenda, tunaenda kwa kanisa. In this home, so you see, when you look at that lifestyle, it is directed from a place, from an authority, by some set of rules. Our issue too from free spirit, children, and chasa uko karibu na steamer, na guza steamer, na nini, you see that? Watoto wanatanga tanga, wanakimbia, wanaingia kwa nyumba wengine. Tell them this story I'm giving here. Now watoto mara nyingi, ukiangalia vizuri, wanezata kuingia kwenye uivi. Atu walienda kuchesa kwa mlima uko, Siju wakavuta waya gani, stima ikakatika huku. Hmm? Ama waliguza waya gani, electrocution. Ama walipigwa shock. Ama siju walifanya nini. Walichukua taya ya nani, wakakimbiza nao. Eh? You, you understand? Walifungua gari ya nani. Whatever. But I'm talking about a covenant people. A people whose lives are directed. It is instructed by a set of rules from above. You tell them that. We will not live a life of ujangili here. So the Lord is saying, Not my people. Yes. Oh, yes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you tell them, Hakuna ujangili kwa nyumba ya baba. He's saying, that our lives ought to be directed. And if you listen very carefully to me, you're telling them. Eh? He's talking about a narrow road. And if you are there, you would have just gone straight to your Matthew. But let's not go there. And you people, I need to start today's message. <laughs> because he says, it's also your, there are sets of rules. Eh? Yes. We said consecrated people, right? They're teachers. He said, Consecrated people. I need to get it. Holy people. Holy behavior. 
devout and you step out what is the meaning of devout you say you many times you hear people say i am a devout catholic i am a devout muslim what's the meaning of that you manaki wana sema even if you put a gun i will say just kill it <laughs> just pull the trigger just finish it but i will not change he's saying that no matter what i believe in the lord totally dedicated devotion lifelong devout he says which means sio sio wale wa kristo waleja leja leo ni mkristo kesho ana jaribu kingine anasema ah hii sunday nimechoka kidogo nina safari you understand that ah he saying sunday morning at 7 you enter the church as a pastor you find him there you leave the church he's still there arranging some few things <laughs> This church My question to you is this Ever since you became born again Ever since you took him accepted him Are you really a devout Christian Are you a devout follower of Christ Huh Paka hata kazini unasema jameni hiyo mpango yenu mnafanya Friday muni, yangu mniwekee mpaka midday you know <laughs> yangu you understand nina nina mambo wa kadha wa kadha nataka nikimbie you understand ashtuka kidogo la ngata ameingia eh yeah. ametoka huko ameingia sasa yeah. sema mimi yangu mtafanya tu up to this second agenda alafu nataka nikimbie huko kidogo eh yeah. and is not kukimbia kidogo it's a long run, eh? <laughs> you see that? Yes. Are you really a devout follower of Christ? Meaning, Peter said, you rather kill me. Paul says, I rather die than to renounce the Messiah. Oh, yeah. Some of you have renounced the Messiah. Are you really God's people? You're telling them, I need to begin today's message, Isaiah 26. <laughs> She's waiting for me. I was just walking with the Mombasa people and CIA and uh, Kawangari. So, and then after that, then now you can bring them to verse what? Verse 3 of Revelation 21. And verse 3, what comes out, out of there? Revelation 21, verse 3, finally. Now you come back. Hmm? What comes out of there? When you enter there, then you find that he says this, that when he finds them, that he, look, look, you do this do this to them everybody you do that it is as though god were looking god was looking say where are they have you seen them that side no i've not yet then where, where are they really you see that? looking looking he said Allah, ni mawapata, ni mawapata. then when he gets them he say oh now the dwelling of god is with man <laughs> you understand <laughs> It portrays a picture of a God who was looking. Looking for his people. And when he found them, he made an announcement to the earth. He said, hey, listen to me, heaven. Listen to me, the nations. Now the dwelling of God is with men. I have found my people. And he said, and they shall be my people. And God himself yes. <laughs> shall be their God. Not another one. No. Not a messenger. Mm -hmm. Himself. Meaning you keep their tab. Kuangalia leo waliamuka. Wako salama. Yes. Because they are the hope of heaven. Huh? But you find that he said the Lord wipe out their tears. He won't let them weep again. Ah! What a beloved people. He said, Manake, do you, you tell them, do you know the meaning of God wipe out their tears anymore? Take away their tears. Do you know the meaning of this? He said, the way I look at you, you don't know. Me, I know. <laughs> you tell them, you, you know. 
They say, Pastor, you always know. <laughs> Which is true because you are the, the one, the anointed one of the Lord. No? You are the one serving them. Eh? Me, when he says, he shall take away their tears, it means, Mazishi ya meisha. Huzuni ya meisha. Umaskini meisha. Ukombozi umeingia, demonic oppression is gone, the quarrels are over, the angers are over, the what what are over. Yeah. And then you tell them that are you aware that some jobs when you go, you, you, you need to say these things to church, please. You people, you can preach church. Me, I cannot. <laughs> you can tell them. I think we're going to take a short break after this so I can begin the next message. You can tell them that in some jobs, if you go, this is what they will ask you. Now interview. You do, do for them like this. Now interview panel. See you? Yes. Now panel for interview. They are sitting, eh? Like this. Big people with pen and paper. And you are there. No, no, like this actually, right? Like this, eh? And little you is there. <laughs> little you. <laughs> Poor you. Sitting there or standing. <laughs> Normally, you know, the kind of uh, if it was Kisoja, mm, <laughs> you understand? Uh? Under fear now. Uh? And then in the interview, they normally ask, Are you aware? You tell them, Are you aware? They ask the following questions. They ask, Have you ever attended anger management classes? <laughs> <laughs> tell them that. The one on a sema, even anger. Out. Wherever you go now, no one will ask you that anymore. Because when they look at you, joy unspeakable. Yeah. They look at you, celebrating the Lord. They look at you, heading to heaven. They look at you, dancing for Christ. They look at you, preaching the gospel. Ah! Now, in Gina, when I na answering, um, it was just once, you know. <laughs> ah! Oh, ilikuwa mara moja tu. During that anger management classes, they said I was doing well. Hili hali watu wake masema, ah, just leave for me these people. I know what I'm doing with them. You understand? And if you check what he's doing with them, they have joy. They have healing. Deliverance. Salvation. Holiness. Righteousness. Repentance. Dancing, praise, worship, everything. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you, you finish with them. So we said, rather, we say it inside there. There's a very important thing he said there. He's, uh, let me read it. Because he raises sexual sin, right? He raises the Holy Spirit, rather. Yeah, yeah, let's just not read it. Can I explain to you? That is the book of Revelation 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, Alice, yeah, 21, verse 3. Kawangware 21 verse 3. He's saying, and Mombasa, he's saying this, that now there's, an, there's a special announcement to, to, to heaven and earth. When he finds them, he says, oh, now, the, uh, eh, I, can't, I don't have looked at a particular person, but let me also do it still. He said, when I find it, I said, oh, now the dwelling of God is with man. And it is the precious people as a church, as a Christian community, as a body of Christ. <laughs> you are telling them, eh? <laughs> hmm? Today, not tomorrow. I mean today. And that's now Litunda. <laughs> I am talking about this day, this material day. And today is the 25th of May. <laughs> <laughs> you read for them. Hmm? Today we must find out. We have to. What does it take for God to dwell among a people? You see that? The ones who are not here. You have not missed anything. Hmm? I'm yet to begin the message. Hey, I need to finish. And we found out. Let us go now to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Wa Korintho wa kwanza mlango wa sita. Kwanzia mstari wa kuminambili. Je. Ita mgarimu nini? Ita tugarimu nini? 
What does it take? Ndio Mungu aishe aishi miongoni mwetu. Kwa maana tumegundua ya kwamba wale ambao anaita ni watu wake anasema sasa hekalu la Mungu lina wanadamu liko is, li, liko kwa wanadamu eh wanadamu eh ah don't even bring me there <laughs> if that is what swahili says that swahili is very powerful yes. hmm? anasema sasa hekalu la Mungu ni wanadamu ni wanadamu that is power yes. power power so much power that one that is very powerful that one now that's the revelation. He says akiwapata anasema ni sasa nishapata hekalu langu. Je, itatugarimu nini ndio Mungu apate hekalu kwetu or whatever how to say it. What will it take? What does it take? What is the cost? In other words you're saying give me a quotation. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> Give me a quotation of what it takes, what I need to do for God to dwell in me, to find a dwelling in me. The key word they give me a quotation. <laughs> hmm? And the quotation might say, Watch a pombe, watch a cigara, bangi watcha, usherati watcha. You understand? You know, you have to talk to the church. Hmm? Yeah? Nikana kwamba unaenda kazini. Na unaulizwa wanasema kazi ndio hii tunayo. Eh? Na huko hapo. Na unauliza, "Je, naweza fanya nini ndio nipate hii kazi?" Unaongea na ule uh, interviewer. Anza vile nakuona ya kwanza wacha pombe. Wacha kabisa pombe, tupa pombe nje. Because he can tell you, he can see from your countenance that alcohol has ruined you. Yes. He can almost smell alcohol in you as you talk. Yes. Hmm? Ndiyo sisi pia tunauliza swali what will it take for God to find a kalu in us a dwelling a tabernacle and then you go first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 and you read it verse 20 right and what does he say there he says food for the stomach stomach for food but he begins by saying everything acceptable but I will not do it right meaning I will live my life conserved I will live my life on the narrow road. Ah, nani kuja? We want to eat crumbs. Let's eat uh, shrimps. Let's eat pork. Let's eat um, uh, crabs. Let's come enjoy the seafood. Eh? Say, ah, 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 ah. Thank you so much. I need to run. For me, I need to run. Hey, ama kama uko hapo na sima. Ah, ah, mimi sasa njimu endele hapa kidogo. Mimi kuna mama uji hapa. Sidi yo? Yeah. Hey! This is mama uji. Oh, una githeri? Eh, mpati githeri, githeri na uji. Eh? Na unatoka huko na una nguvu kabisa. Eh? Eh? Na wale wanatoka huko wanayumba yumba, you see that? Wanatetemeka? Wanababaika? He said, live your life reservedly, conservative. Anasema tuishi kama kama ni kufunga nywele tufunge. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. Kama ni kuacha longe wanawake tuache. Yes. Ni anasema hivyo. Yes. Huh? Kama hili study za goldi na za za, 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 za almasi na zile jiwe jiwe za kitanzania Tanzanite. Ndiyo nafanya wabwana saza zote wanangalia hivi. Tuache sasa. Yeah. Tafadhali tutupe. Ha? Yeah. Huh? You are now preaching to your church. Yeah. Eh? You are waking people up and say, Allah? This guy wants to change, change our lives. Na meonga, na hii kanisa maanza two, two weeks sasa. Changamu ya hapa. Eh? Kwa ni ye ni nani? Uzi ulize mimi nani? Mimi ni mtumeishu wa mungu. You tell them, I must give you the truth yes. if I love you. Mm. If there's anything taking you to hell, stop it. Amen. And then when you go to 1 Corinthians 6 and so forth, he talks about food and the stomach. And you destroy both. Meaning, anasema, kawangwari, meaning anasema, jameni tufate kufunga. Tufunge 
let us go into a holy fast to kill the flesh, the tumbo. And you tell them, when it comes to discussing my people, he makes a headline say, sexual immorality. Eh? The first thing he says, chakula na tumbo. And then you ask them, Jay, do you know that tumbo has led people to trouble? Watu wamepigania nini? Chakula, tumbo. Kanisa hata sikuizi kuna wachungaje mbao na obiri kwa ajili ya? Tumbo. Tell them, God is justified. He must ask. He is right. Tumbo, tumbo, tumbo. All the time. And you tell them, if you go today, you find people in the supermarket. Every day I say, I take. I see I take. I take. I take. I say, hey, Ujama, does he need all these things? Huh? You follow him today, some are getting rotten. <laughs> Tumbo. Tumbo. It is the source of greed. The source of evil, the fall, the what, everything was in even. Immorality. Hallelujah. And then you tell them that down the line he says, don't you know <laughs> that the body, your body, huh, is the living tabernacle of the Holy Spirit? Huh? You manaka nasema, kanisa ambalo lina itwa my people. The church that is called my people is the church when the Lord looks, he finds that that church, she is aware of her worthiness. That's it. She's aware. She knows the value of deliverance. The cost and the price of the cross. She knows her value. You cannot put on a till and say, mm, niweke hapa, niongeze kilo mbili hapa tuone kama ita balance. Huh? Tell the church those things. Tell them. Right? Where is the fanya evil? Niweke hapa that I put here. Put for me some stone, some more gold here to see if I can balance her up. Tell them, this church, there is nothing on the earth that can buy her. She knows her value. So, she's aware that she's the living tabernacle of the impurchasable Holy Spirit. Unpurchasable. <laughs> you did not hear me. When you people give testimony here, and say, at home, at hey, you know, the Lord came, he visited the church, what? Are you aware that some people out there don't have this testimony? Yes. And are you also aware that if you lose it, you cannot put together some heap of money in a gunia to buy it? No, no, you to buy it back? You cannot. And if you know that, then guess what? You preserve it. Uphold it. He can is ah, Mimi, Ninajua Binguni Nantegemea. Heaven is waiting for me. And now we know. You walk out. Now we know. I have just found out that when he says that the dwelling of God is now man, the dwelling of God is now with man. The dwelling of God is now their hearts. The dwelling of God is now with the church. I have found out that Kumbe, he means that the Holy Spirit has filled them. And now they are my people. Those who are not here, that's for you. Hallelujah, I need to finish this thing, really. I must finish. After that, we went to what? Revelation 27, right? 20, 20, 21 verse 27. And we saw that the book and it's for those who will walk in righteousness in the new Jerusalem. Right? Which means the citizen of Jerusalem. So after these precious people, I want to look today at the book of Isaiah. I, in fact, today I will cover two. I want to look at Isaiah and Second Chronicles. What other features are there? Now for those of you who have been coming here twice, you will now make notes. 
What other new features are there about the people he calls my people? But guess what? At the end of it all, you'll always find a cutting line, a bottom line. Right? Yes. And that's why I said, this message here of my people, this message is current today, tomorrow. If the Lord does not come in two years, it is still alright. If it takes two years and eight months, when I meet you teaching it, you are still in shape. If it takes 10 years from now and I come to see you and find you preaching it, you are still in good shape. Yes. This message is current. That's why you find a bottom line. Kyle, in her entire practice, she may be able to identify herself. You see that? In other words, to know exactly what identity she bears. Because that is what will finally matter when it's all said and done. That is what will count on that day. We have said it so eloquently, so beautifully, that the Lord, when he looks at the earth, he sees only two types of people. Those that are his and those that are not his. And this time I am you talking here. I guess, I guess that is a given right now. And we saw even Jesus himself. And I think it's somewhere in the book of John chapter 6. You can look for it. <coughs> when he said, Lord, these ones that have come, these are mine. They're called Uzi Songe. Hmm? Sexual sin. And so now we are beginning to understand those things that when you do, you cannot be my people. Much as we're exploring the things that when you do, you will be my people. We are also discovering the things that you ought not to do to be my people. The two sides of the coin. And we have seen that in Kiswahili he says, the dwelling of God is now people, is now men. Men. Huh? Which means God in all this conversation is clamoring for one thing. Will you build for me a temple, a dwelling place, a tabernacle of worship? Huh? The reason this becomes so important right now, the identity of my people, is because of the following. Number one, we saw the fall of Adam in the garden. Adam fell and he lost his heavenly inheritance. But before Adam fell, Adam was called my people. You remember that? Walking with God. God himself. He was their God. But after the fall, we saw the sacrifice that the Lord initiated to try to redeem men, atone for sins. I use the word try, right? Did I use the word try? Yes, sir. T R Y. Three letters like this. I said. I said try. He tried to redeem men through the atonement for sin. Number one blood of an animal, wrap them with an animal skin. Blood was poured. Number two, the controversial sacrifice between Cain and Abel. You remember? Number three, comes now Moses, the man of God. 
comes Nani? Moses, the man of God. When Moses comes to the scene, he says, hey you people, are you not the children of Abraham? But as far as I'm concerned, there was a covenant, a promise between God and Abraham. That they shall go for slavery for some time and then shall eventually return home. Isn't that right? Then the Lord uses Moses to institute another sacrifice by bringing them from Egypt into the wilderness he sets up a tabernacle a tabernacle of worship tabernacle of sacrifice tabernacle of the Lord they call it the tabernacle of Moses the tent of Moses and in the process the Lord speaks to Moses to establish a priesthood you see that? I'm just giving you the chronology of the significance of what we are doing today. Of where we are today. Huh? I repeat this. I'm just giving you the sequence, the genesis, the beginnings, the walkings, the workings, the growth. Up to where we are today. Where did it start from? Why is this important now? Hmm? And the Lord uses Moses to raise forth a priesthood called the Levitical priesthood. Are you there? And the sacrifice they offer is the blood of an animal. Still we are on the blood. Right? But the Lord says, look, there is a weakness here. It's a weak priesthood. But before I look at the weakness of that, everybody focus on me right now. Because I think we are not understanding each other. Just be to me right now. Before I focus on the weakness. That is now you preaching. Please excuse me. Do you, that part I should not mention, right? Because that's you saying. Eh? Before I focus on the weakness of the Levitical priesthood. The Aaronic garment. The Aaronic tent. The Aaronic sacrifice. The Aaronic worship. The, the, the wilderness worship. It was in the wilderness also. Huh? I want to appreciate a few things. Allow me. You must allow me appreciate a few things. If I did not, it would be an error. What would I appreciate? He says that when the worship was taking place, Moses is there and they are sacrificing and they are still in the wilderness. The Lord said, my people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. At the weak priesthood, eh? Huh? At the ah, uh, what you you? That's a weak one, eh? Huh? Yet, when they worshipped, the Lord said, "My people." And then, listen to this now. He said it so well. That when they worship, the glory came down. Uh huh. And they became my people. Yes. They became his people. So we know that the house of Israel is my people to the Lord. Right? And last week I gave you the revelation of Rohama, Lo Rohama, Lo Ami. Remember that? Yes. And those who are not here last week, you can read those. It is there in the DVD, okay? You just take the scriptures, you know? And you read it. And you watch the explanation. But still, I don't want to focus on that. I don't want to say, hey, that look, they are now Israel. They are God's people. So for us, you know what? Let us stay like this. Because, you know, those are now his people. For us, you know, we are not like that, you know. Because, you know, that's just Israel. No, Israel is like that. God is God. Whether you are Israelite, Gentile, you are Ugandan, 
American German God is God That means the standards of God changes not they changeth not even Israel was held to a standard for her to be my people. That's the part I want to bring out. So you say it's weak. Why weak? Don't say weak. Don't say it. Don't try to say weak at the weak priesthood of Aaron, of Levites. Do not say such a thing here. Because if you look at their priesthood, there are some admirable characters you pick in there. You take one, two, put in your kikapo, moja, moja, two. You have a basket, a bountiful. And you say, we can do well borrowing from them. So we can understand this worship we have right now. He said, wakati waliitwa kwa kuhani, in that worship, they wore a garment. And that garment had the right anointing to separate them. <laughs> Nobody heard me here. Hey. Kumbe, there is something good about it. Allah. Because we have just seen that my people, he says like this, he carved them out, he says, don't worry about them, I know what I'm doing with them. He said, no, but we want to know what you're doing with them. Yes. No, 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 please, don't worry about it. They are alright. <laughs> huh? They too had to be separated. Separated out. There are scriptures, I don't know whether I'll get there, where it tells them, the land you are going to, <laughs> you know those scriptures, eh? You'll meet some people, don't marry their daughters. You understand? Mm. Ah, you people, don't take me there. No, I'm just passing by right now because I want to get to my scripture, which is Isaiah. I'm just doing a general overview. You see that? He says, wherever you are going there, don't try to marry their daughters because you'll end up worshipping, which means, look, look, worshipping their gods, right? Yes. You, you know the women are very good at making you worship their god, right? Because once they have your children, they can teach your children things when you're not home, right? Now look at this. He was saying that behold, I have raised you as a difference different people that one will equalize you he was saying another thing also let them convert into you but not you into yeah. that's what he was saying I am no no I'm not yet giving features I am just saying I want first to appreciate what Israel was doing in the desert in the wilderness on this matter of my people. That God, despite being chosen people, covenant people, ah, I'm mentioning those things. God's people, Israelites, Jews, they still had to be held to the same standard. My people. Number two, look at this. Is there a day the high priest entered the Holy of Holies without a garment? No. Ha <laughs> ha. Is there a day the high priest risked to go to the Holy of Holies and say, uh, with jeans, eh? Jeans, straws, and t shirt, and goggles, and I'm going to work with you. I'm going to Jeans, and t shirt, and I'm going to Say, oh, you guys, what's going on here? I want to worship a little bit in the afternoon, Saturday today. What? Allah, Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Hey? Hey, hey, hey. Excuse me. You walk into God's holy of holies like that. And you know, um, I've just come into church a little bit on the way with my kids. They're praying out in the car. You want to see, I want to read the Bible. I want to worship a little bit here. Because I'm trying to wait for a friend we're heading with for whatever. Hmm? He's wearing a jeans, a t-shirt, the jeans in Anbana. Akondani uko, ana nini nini hapo, eh? 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 
There was a protocol. And there was strict compliance. They observed protocol. What God said was observed to the letter with fear and trembling like this. Allah, is there something good from that weak, weak, that weak thing? Can we, uh, uh, you say now you're beginning to rethink, it's still strong. Eh? It must be a strong thing. Eh? Coming, hey. But we have just ended without. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Now you understand why I've gone there. Yes. Because he still held them the same standard, my people. He said, when my people worship, they follow the ordinance of worship. The ordinance laid down structure of worship that shall not enter there except with blood in his hand. Blood. Damu. For atonement. Shall not enter without a garment. Because he feared. In fact, even with a the garment, they put some, the, the bells, right? Yes. The rope and bells. Yes. You remember the bells and the ropes? Yes. So if something happened, they pull him out. Nobody wants to enter there. Mm -hmm. So which means, that weak priesthood of Israel, of Aaron, actually can teach us something about God's people. Called the fear of the Lord. They trembled before the Lord. Ah! Well, it tetemeka sana. To the extent they fear to enter there, even if some catastrophe took place there. Yes. Huh? Yes. They feared Jehovah. Look. Before entry, even with the garment, bells were tied because he feared, if I'm not right, eh, if my righteousness is not measured into, because that garment is righteousness. Yes. So the question then becomes, have you ever trembled at reaching there? Some of you, you know, some of you actually at the altar, probably you've lasted at women. <laughs> Abomination. Hello? Uh-huh. And some of the women in the church, no, you don't talk to them. Some of you women in the church, sitting here, you have lasted, you have done things the pastor. Let me do it this side so they see me. Sorry about that. Can I do those things here? Yes. They look at the pastor. And then they look down. And they look this. I don't know whether I'm doing it right, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'll clean my nose first because they don't do it with nose running. <laughs> so, so they do. And then they look down like this. They look down. Pastor says, why is that woman look at me like this? To get the message, eh? Huh? And then after that, she to open the Bible. <laughs> Some of you have lasted at the pastor while he's sacrificing blood. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. I want to bring it to you that's unforgivable. Yes. Oh, today can I speak truth? Yes. And for abomination. Allah, they travel. Kumbe, there is something small we can borrow from there. We can look at the way they behave and say, ah, I think I like that. Eh? I, I, I think that one still holds until today. Eh? Oh, yes, it does. Meaning, for three days he never touched his wife before he entered. He was in repentance and trembling. Lord, am I going to be okay? Please don't kill me. Don't finish me. Lord, look at your children. These are your people. If you kill me, they were what angaika. Sindio. And only when he was well, then he entered with reverence. Ah, you people. Ah, 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 ah. It's a wake up call. They call the, they call the clarion call to the church. No, I'm just passing by because I want to come to Christ and the blood and then my people. You see that? We see very clearly that society, society, they came to the priest, priest, our child has reached the age of bar mitzvah. Yes, so what should we do? Twelve years old. So the priest says, okay, prepare, we're going to organize a service to be able to bless the child. They feared the house of God. They consulted with the priests of God. Is the church being consulted today much? 
everything wanafanya kivyao sasa they saying you know what hao wachungaji ni wakora hawa ah wachana na wachungaji ni wakora kama unataka kutengeneza kitu kidogo kwa mtoto chinja tu mbuzi mkule as a family lakini usiende kwa mchungaji asijui atakuombe mtoto nini eh atanaenda shule hmm? so there is something good we can learn more from there to the same god about my people right yes <laughs> hallelujah he says when they wore the garment gave them dignity meaning dignitary of god ha <laughs> somebody heard me nobody heard me ah kuna mtu amesikiza vizuri hapo dignitary of god Digni do you know what dignitary is do you know what dignitary is uh, no nobody hears me here anymore yes. nimewapoteza no you are talking to church that yes. time <laughs> hmm? yes. huh? dignitary means when he comes in the cups of tea have been arranged the worship uh, you know the stately people statesmen eh? Ah, huh? government people, that kind of situation. Eh? Why? Because they carry that honor. They carry it. Most of the time, they have won it. Eh? They won it. Alipita elections. Aka voti wa mbunge. And he's now coming as a mbunge. You see that? And you don't find him, ha <laughs> nani, uh, whatever. You know those little jokes, nonsense there. They carry themselves respect and responsibility. And the level of correctness in the eyes of what? Society. And the eyes of who? No, okay, now I'm talking about the dignitary of the world. The eyes of society. When you meet him in his chair, Normally they, they I think they remove coats and put eh? No time they don't eh? or they put eh? they put now the coat is here and is talking swinging I think they don't swing I think psychologists say that means something eh? <laughs> I don't know what they do but the question is even when you talk to him you say hey we are mejengwa huh you feel this is an important person. It's not something you say, you write, mini dignitary, I, I need respect. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. You earn it. They just, it speaks, huh? Yes. It, they, in fact, the, the, the right scripture, the, the right vocabulary says, command respect. Mm -hmm. You command it. Yes. You understand? Yes. By virtue of your appearance, yes. what you're doing, you know? So there is something we can borrow. The servants of the Lord then command and respect. Yes. By command, they commanded. They were dignity with dignitary or you say dignitary of God. Ha <laughs> ha, you people. And many other things. After that came the priesthood of Christ. Much higher. Much, much, much higher. And now I define to you according to Hosea. Go and marry that adulterous woman. And also with her children of unfaithfulness. Very strong words, right? And I explain to you how now we are also grafted into my people. But higher order by the blood of Christ. Higher by a spiritual covenant. Do you understand me now? And so I wanted to give you a chronology. Because you see, when the Israelites found out that they were my people, they had to operate within certain bounds. They had to be instructed by certain books. What to eat, what to dress, what to do, what to say. Instruction by the five books. Huh? And the priesthood was a symbol of Israel. They were consulted on every matter regarding living. Right? Yes. Now, how about the church? When we have now become my people and the new law is given in our hands, have our lives been guided, instructed 
by the new law. Because if your life is instructed by the new law, guess what? You, the women in Israel, look at me. Look at me. I want everyone to look. Eh? The women in Israel, they, because they were being instructed by the book, by, by the law. Look, by, 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 by the book, the, 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 the instruction, eh? the ordinance that defines my people, right? Skirts long. Long, even children going to school long. Hair covered by heart, never seen. Food only kosher. Ah! That was them in order to sustain the my people status. To be known as the people of God. Did you understand me? Yes. I've just mentioned a few, not all. They did many things that were actually an instruction. How about the church then? Have you done everything according to the instruction of the covenant? Because you are now a covenant people. Hey, people living by the covenant. You see that? So my people is a covenant people. But I just wanted to bring you, and that's why even us now as a church, most importantly there has been, let me, let me do this first. After, after Israel, right? Came the first church. Do you remember the first church? Yes. Everybody focus on me. Musilale, watu wa keancha wezi lala hapa. Kwa mana watu wa narobi ya walali. Na wanakula hiki klasiku, sindio? Yes. Na walali. Na njini hindi mara ya kwanza tu. Hakuna kulala, sindio? Yes. Ha? After that priesthood, which was weak of Israel, that worship, that covenant, came the new covenant. Then the new church. Remember the first church where Paul is apostle. Peter is apostle. John is there. They are there. Matthew. You remember that church? Mark. I am just giving the importance of the message I want to give now. Why is it important right now to speak about my people in this church? Because now when it comes to the first church, they realized when Christ died on the cross and resurrected and went up in heaven, they just realized, we are now my people. You see that? Yeah. They realized something has changed. They walked out. They did not do this. Huh? What's your profession? We want to book it in the hotel book. Hmm? I'm from Kenya. No, what's your profession? Because we have to fill it. Or oh, can you fill the form? Profession businessman. He has brought a woman to the hotel. Profession businessman. But there will always be somebody there. You understand? Yes. Do you know the Lord operates? Yes. Someone will always be there Say, Allah, what are you doing here, Nani Askofu? Eh? <laughs> you understand me? In a far away, far, many oceans crossed. <laughs> the first church, when they walked, they walked under the covenant. That's why they preached the Lord, they lived the Lord, and look at the massive exploits they did as my people. In fact, when they went to places, they told the people about my people. They say, you, that Jesus who was abused has now converted us into my people. The Lord's people. Yes. Even you, you can now come. They want people. They brought healing. What, what deliverance? They were speaking about this new found covenant. The covenant of my people now. They did massive exploits for the Lord, right? Yes. But when it came to this church, it's as if she lost her identity. You see that? Yeah. I know nobody's answering me, but I'll say the truth. And I'll, I'll show no partiality to anyone. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> because, no, this is serious. Because the thing is, there is corruption in the church. Wanafunza pesa, mambo ya wanawake, 
there is immorality in the youth church, in the big church, in the whatever, name it, everything is inside, within the everything which are we. The gospel being preached is different. There is no fear of the Lord. So actually, based on that one factor alone, lack of fear of the Lord, they breach the covenant of my people. And though they cease to be. Then that's why this is an important moment of awakening. That's why I'm saying I am totally justified to call you people here and say, let us investigate ourselves. Right? I'm totally justified to ask this church, can we re-examine our identities? Tuneza kuwa hapa, tunaketi pamoja, nafikiria sisi zote in one direction. Kumbe some people are being left behind. Or kumbe we are all headed in the wrong direction. Huh? Have you seen that? Yes. I brought you from Adam. And you saw the necessity of the covenant. You saw every time he came redeemed, defined. Redeemed, defined. Say, my people now. Now behold, you are redeemed. Now my people. And then lost it in this modern church. So I have every right to stand here in this church and ask you people, are we really my people? Because it's, it's all over. Right? So turn with me to the book of, Ma, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah 26. So we may see other characteristics of my people. I'll be running on this one. Isaiah 26. So we may look at other valuable, treasured characters of my people. The people the Lord calls my people. What else are these people? Does somebody want to know? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're beginning a new piece. Once you are there, say Amen. Amen. I am reading now. Verse 19 on. Isaiah 26 verse 19. And he says this. Okay, people are still opening. Get there. Isaiah 26, verse 19. We are reading onwards. I read NIV for simplicity, but I'll read other versions also, which I have. He says, But your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell... Do you see the man of reading? Yes. Did somebody see the man of reading? Yes. But your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You see that? So you are reading with zeal, with gusto, with energy, with strength, with your creating anticipation as you read, right? Yes. But your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up. And shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people. Do you not understand my people? As you read on, he's describing the rapture of the church. Isaiah has seen the rapture. You're familiar with this scripture. I have read this over and over again, especially after the vision of the rapture of the dead, right? Yes. But what amazes me, he's saying that in the process of describing the events at rapture, right before and rapture, he's able to define my people. That to me is very key. Inside there as he's describing the coming of the Lord, how he's coming to take even those who have died and all that. And then you hear he describes my people. Hallelujah. Amen. My son, it is well. It is well. Just, just take this for the sheep, please, okay? Yes, I worry about the sheep. I know I've watched you even last time when you're here. I, I followed you very keenly. And at night I prayed for you. I said, Lord, help him. Just focus him. Just arrest his mind and, and just subdue, uh, humble him, you know, to prepare for the sheep, you know. Because the sheep, so those of you who did this, the big revival is going on. Yes. yes. And we have more messages. I have a lot of other messages. The blood, the cross, what, uh, many others. 
And he says, and he says, yes, amen. And he says, huh? he says, go my people, enter your rooms, shut the doors behind you, 